A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. The employment file of a Soviet Frankenstein. In the basement of the archive of the Almaty Agricultural Institute. Here, the documents have been stored since 1930 until now. There are the old employment files of professors and teachers. A thin and homely folder. There is the personal form of human resources accounting in it. For those from the nobility, the result of the party's cleanup is good and the professor's salary is 945 rubles. Orders, business trip certificates, nothing remarkable. This is the employment file of a Soviet Frankenstein. Here's the employment file of Ilya Ivanov. He worked here from 1931 to 32. Well, to hybridize people with monkeys, how is that? And where is the moral code? This is the reference which says he worked as the head of department in the Almaty Veterinary Institute. There were absolutely no experiments on humans. There were no doctors with names like Mengele in the Karlag. Chapter 1. Revolutionary Technologies It was a disturbing and strange time, a time when the foundations changed. We've been building a new world, at times not really paying attention to mankind's values. On May the 27th, 1925, Dr. Ivanov refers to the chairman of the People's Commissars, Mr. Rukov, to allow experiments on the hybridization of the great apes and humans, and they gave him permission. Well, it's a big crackdown on religious prejudices. There are other reasons. At the beginning of the 20th century, Dr. Voronov was very popular. He was the prototype of Bulgakov's professor, Priobrazhensky. He's in Paris conducting rejuvenation operations, transplanting monkey gonads. And the results, according to rumors, are excellent. In Moscow, they don't mind to rejuvenate either, but Voronov did not come, and there is our response to foreign countries. Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov. The thing is that Ivanov was a terrible person. However terrible a person, he had an attractive appearance. The old teacher, his face thin with a gray beard and merry eyes risen from the depths of his memory as if alive. His eyes were smiling tenderly, but it felt that he had concentrated the ideas in it. And it is unlikely that Professor noticed his companion. From the book by Boris Fortunato, The Island of Gorilloids. Professor Ivanov was one of the first who successfully used assisted procreation in practice. Also in 1910, at the World Congress of Zoologists, he performed with a report on the possibility of creating a human hybrid. But no one supported him because of religious, moral and ethical reasons, as he says himself. Fear of the Holy Synod was stronger than the desire to meet this undertaking. The Soviet government is free from prejudice. First, Ivanov was given $10,000 for a trip to Africa to catch monkeys, and then experiments continued in the Sukhumi Reserve. It was organized in order to hybridize monkeys with humans and to conduct experiments on humans and apes. Genetically, we are more homogenous. If you take genomes of apes and our genomes, they really are almost the same genes, but mixed in different orders in different chromosomes. In Guinea, the local women did not agree to participate in the experiments at any price. Only the Soviet ones agreed for the sake of science. And the saddest part of this story was that when they brought the monkeys, a member of the Komsomol offered themselves as material in order to produce this new human. It's horrible. I beg you, do not refuse me. 
I am happy to comply with all requirements related to the experiment. I believe in the possibility of fertilization. If you refuse, please write me the address of any of the foreign scientist zoologists. A letter from a woman resident of Leningrad. We now have IVF and vitro fertilization technology and we can hybridize anyone and anything. We can technically make the same DNA, rearrange different numbers of chromosomes, leave all what is in the genome, but to force the cells to divide. It is not too difficult, but the question is, for what reason and why? In the 21st century, a lot is possible. Back then, the result was unclear. But in the 20s, they strongly believed in revolutionary technologies. And the reason? Why did not arise. A hybrid is a supplier of organs for transplants, the ideal proletarian working tirelessly and not needing to be paid, even the universal soldier, less sensitive to pain, obedient and strong. But were some experiments carried out? Yes, but nothing's known. In 1930, the lab was closed suddenly. Some employees were sentenced to death, accused of counter-revolutionary activity. Ivanov was arrested himself. Allegedly, he had intended to publish the results of his experiments abroad. And then he was sent to Amati, where he also headed the laboratory. A strange story. Chapter 2. Groups of Red Monkeys. An improbable and monstrous creature, a wide stooping figure with ridiculous and disproportionately huge long hands like a gorilla has down below his knees, with black hair covering his chest, but straight long like a human foot stepping firmly, and in the hands of the monster there was a rifle. From the book by Boris Fortunatov, The Island of Gorilloids. Boris Fortunatov, biologist, writer, apparently was familiar with Dr. Ivanov. In a strange way, the life of Fortunatov was also connected with Kazakhstan. First, he fought in Kostanai and Mangushlak in the White Guard, then in the Red. These rumors, there, appeared during the civil war in the Caspian region. From the memoirs of Viktor Shklovsky, they said that the British landed apes in Baku, trained in all the rules of military warfare. They attacked without fear, and they will beat the Bolsheviks. It was said that when in battle for Baku, one of such apes was killed. It was buried with the orchestra of Scottish military music, and the Scots were crying, because Scots were instructors of the ape legions. Of course, there were no ape legions, but the idea seems to have been floating in the air. And it is very likely that Ivanov was not the only one involved in hybridization. The attitude of Fortunato to it was definitely negative. The Islands of Gorilloids was published in 1929. One of the heroes seemed to be copied from Ivanov himself. The appearance, circumstances, even the name is similar to Professor Idaev. In the novel, his invention was used by some fascists. The professor was kept in prison. In the finale, during a riot of gorilloids, Idaev dies. But the real professor was alive at the time. His experiments were in the middle. He will be arrested in one and a half years. And yet, what did this Soviet Frankenstein do in Almaty? He worked at the institute conducting research. So he mostly conducted in vitro fertilization of farm animals. The trip was paid. All costs were covered by the Veterinarian Institute. In 1931 in Almaty, the professorial chair for hybridization of farm animals was opened, probably specifically for Ivanov. The professor did not arrive alone. Most likely with his wife, here is the reference. Ticket prices were as little more than 170 rubles with strange kind of luggage. Apparently, it was very big, but it was not clear from the documents what the shipping costs were, but they were more expensive than the tickets themselves, probably more than 200 rubles. What was he carrying? With its cells and hybrids? His son was also a biologist. Is there an indication that he worked with his father? No, not here, it doesn't say. He began actively. He went on business trips, there are documents, proving the visits to 
Uzunagash Balkash, according to the documents, he trained over a hundred specialists. No details were reported. Actually, in the personnel file, they're not needed. Ilya Ivanovich died at the age of 62 on March the 20th, 1932, from a stroke or from a flu. He was buried at the Central Cemetery. A friend and colleague, academician Pavlov, wrote an obituary, but when it was published, the professor had been dead for a year already, unless, of course, we believe the official version of his death. Chapter 3, Secret Laboratories. A terrifying scream that began from a low note and which went on for a second in a prolonged howl and frozen in a barely audible moaning sound. You could hear human longing and intonation of an intelligent human being. Still, it was not the voice of a man. From the book by Boris Fortunato, The Island of Gorilloid. The destiny of Fortunatov is sad. A year after the death of Ivanov, he was arrested and sent to Kolag. One of the charges was the implementation of animal hybridization sabotage plans. There were two brothers in the world. One of them was in the Kalag. He was engaged in cereals. He crossed cereals and bred new varieties. What the activity of Boris Fortunatov was is unknown. Allegedly, he was released prematurely. He allegedly died in the Dolinka. Already in the 50s, there were articles published in the foreign press which said that the experiments were continued in the Gulag. And reportedly, Ivanov was not dead. He went to the Dolinka or Spask. There's a secret laboratory where hybrid humans were created and then forced to work in coal and uranium mines. What apes are in Siberia? Well, what apes could be in Karlag? No apes were there. There were only sheep, cows, and bulls. In the 30s in Almaty, all sorts of rumors were going on. Among them, were rumors about the strange creatures that appeared around the city. In the following decades, the stories of meeting apes began again. Maybe on the basis of these stories, maybe because of some other reasons, the famous zoologist Paul Marikovsky began looking for a Bigfoot. And it looks like he even saw one. I asked him, Marikovsky, Pavel Ustinovich, have you seen a Bigfoot? He says, once I saw one, I was on the other side of the gorge. Well, the gorge and the other crest. I saw the book foot. It's very difficult to see. When he crossed the humps, for example, from one valley to another, he passed a snowy field. Plus, there was an impression that it was living in the snow. And about the strange noises, the Sukumi Reserve a few decades after the experiments. When in Abkhazia, in the area where there was the war, the corpses of people are torn, and they're not torn apart as if they were blown up, an officer told me. And as if they were torn with an incredible force and by unknown creatures. These, of course, are fairy tales, but it has been almost 90 years and they're still multiplying. We talked with an officer there in Abkhazia. A soldier came to him and he asked, but when will the humanoid pass the border to shoot him or not? And how to consider that humans are derived from hybridization? Who is he? Is he a human or an animal? Is he subject to human laws or not? Is he subject to the protection of human rights or not? In the end, what was the outcome of Ivanov's experiments? Epilogue, the humanoid of Ili Alatao. In one way, perhaps Professor's experiments have been successful and he was able to get a hybrid human. But something went wrong. Probably it concerns information leakage and the nursery garden was quickly closed. They got rid of any unnecessary witnesses. The professor was sent to the foothills of the Ili Alatau. And then, only questions are left. Why here? What did the professor bring with him? Maybe the professor 
was unimportant. And shortly thereafter, his life ended. It's not clear why. There are discrepancies between the dates and many annexes are missing. In particular, the above mentioned correspondence. And another problem, maybe not very important, but still, these documents do not have the order of dismissal of Professor Ivanov by reason of death. There is an order for salary and on the displacement as it is written, but there is no death reference. Ivanov was released earlier from exile for some achievements on March the 9th, 1932, with the right to move around the entire Union. And 11 days later, he died. By the way, if he was exiled, he should have been under surveillance, but the professor's file was not found in the archive of the KGB. It was reported that most likely the documents were sent to Moscow.